Hello, everyone. Welcome to Wondering Soup. I am Kat. I'm Amber. And today we're going to do a mini talk about our mini <laughs> semi-imposed quarantine here in Hanoi, Vietnam. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about our arrival, why we decided to move here, and um, basically our experience so far. Um, it's going to be a quick, yep. quick video, we think. So... Again, I'm Kat. This is Amber. We are Wondering Sue. Um, so let's start out with some basics about us. We've been traveling in Southeast Asia since June of 2019. Uh, we've been so far to uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, um, Cambodia, Thailand, Singapore. Yeah. And now we're in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. We um, at that time we spent the longest in uh, Cambodia, where we lived for six months. Did you go to Cambodia? Yeah, uh, it's a really interesting experience. <clears throat> so we were in Malaysia. We've been living there since uh, January of 2020, and as uh, the coronavirus stuff was spreading, we debated on where we we're going to go next. Uh, mindful of the fact that. You only get 90 days in Malaysia before you have to leave and then come back if you want to. And that's because they only give you 90 days. There are no longer visas or longer visas unless you meet certain criteria. And our criteria wasn't what was necessary or needed to get those longer extended visas. So uh, we got here in January and uh, we knew time was going to be running short. So we were debating on where we wanted to go to next. And we decided to go to Vietnam. It was a... Uh, either Vietnam or Taiwan or back to Thailand, mm -hmm. which we really, really like Thailand. We've been there twice uh, on this journey. But we decided to go to Vietnam because we had never been there. Uh, not as a traveling family. Uh, I've been there once before. We've never been together. So <clears throat> that was part of the decision making. Um, and our plan was to come to Vietnam and we had certain sites we wanted to see, certain mm -hmm. places we know we wanted to go, tours we wanted to do, um, and then everything with the virus um, was developing and we were trying to figure out, oh, should we still go to Vietnam because we can't do all the things we wanted to do um, because we could see that they were already closing down different um, sites and tourist locations and things like that, but... It still turned out that Vietnam is going to be the better option for us. Right. For a number of reasons. Uh, the first one being the most obvious one, that's the 90-day visa that we applied for and we got approved for. So we thought uh, we were already, again, going to be hitting the 60-day mark in Malaysia. If we come here, we'll know that we'll have 90 days. And we thought that would be the length of time that this would be occurring and it would uh, stop um, us being able to move to other areas. So once we uh, got approved for the visa... Uh, we got an Airbnb here, we're in an apartment, um, and then we got the visa on arrival. But, again, that was one of the reasons why we chose Vietnam. Um, and again, it's fairly inexpensive. Mm -hmm. uh, we've probably spent less than we did in Malaysia here, um, mainly because where we're at, <laughs> yeah. they're in a lot of uh, delivery, food delivery, because, you know, we will order some food all damn day. Um, and then grocery shopping hasn't been that expensive yet. I think we spent way more in Malaysia than we have here. Yeah, I'm sure. Because yeah. just because there's more Western type mm -hmm. food um, there than there is here. So, yeah, you're not going to be throwing all your money on all the big brand names because they just they don't have those here mm -hmm. as many. Right. At least so in Hanoi. So far. Right. In Hanoi. Yeah. Um, and then again, we had the 90 day visa that we applied for online, paid for online, and we were approved within three days. So that was a good thing. Um, and then the big factor for me, and I think for, for Amber as well, was the procedures that uh, Vietnam was putting into place to handle this virus. Um, they've been one of the least effective countries. I think they only have maybe 55 cases altogether and zero deaths. Um, somebody correct me if I'm wrong. And so that was a big thing for us. Malaysia wasn't doing as much at that time. They've since instituted a lot of things, but at the time we were doing not too much except limiting access uh, from China. So that was a huge thing for us. We were like, if we're going to move, uh, instead of staying here, then we need to move somewhere where they are really actively working to keep the number count down, which is why we didn't go back to the U.S. Right, and y'all, when I tell you and that 
I think it was literally the day after we got here. If not, it could have been 48 hours, but it seemed to me like it was the day after we got here that they really started cracking down on who they were letting in. And if they did let you in from uh, as a foreigner and not another Vietnamese person, if they did let you in, you were going into quarantine. No, that was everybody. Oh, yeah, tr true. I'm sorry. It, it, even if you are a Vietnamese and you were coming in, you were going to go into quarantine. But it was literally like the day after we got here. So we just missed that mark. And I mean, thank goodness no one on our flight that we know um, had the virus anyway. So we probably would have been fine, okay. but still. Yeah, so yeah. they we got here on the 13th and that was on a Friday. And that Monday they instituted a policy. They issued on Saturday saying that on Monday they were going to stop anybody from coming in, unless you were Vietnamese. Uh, if you were foreign, you were just going to get sent back. Uh, Vietnamese were going to go on a 14-day quarantine. There were some people that came in on the flight on that Sarah today, and they did have someone who tested positive. Um, but they also gave them the option of either getting back on a plane and flying back to wherever they came from, or going to a 14-day 14 a 14-day um, quarantine at the place that they put them at. And they're feeding and housing them, so it's your choice. And I believe that there's a guy out there who's produced a couple of videos, um, who's been interviewed, and he did stay. He's a foreigner. Uh, he said there's four of them. But, uh, yeah, so it, we got here on the 13th, and the next day they issued this proclamation. Now, before that, they had really shut down a few countries, um, China being the one, and uh, all of Europe. I mean, not Italy, just all of Europe. You could not get in. So there were quite a few places they'd already um, tampered everything down. But after that, they just said nobody. Right. So I think that's a good thing. Yeah. I yeah, really it definitely do. feels, um, yeah, I mean, it feels fairly secure here. And then where we are, the neighborhood where we live in, they are, um, they, what I've been told or what I've seen in the policies is that you actually can't come into the neighborhood unless you live here. I don't know if they're really enforcing that or not. Like, I can't tell, but supposedly that's the case because um, it's a pretty big area and people come and um, and visit the park and things like that. And you can't if you're not a resident. And then also the store here, um, they're testing going in and out. So to see if you have a temperature, you can't come in if you have if your temperature is over a certain amount. So. Yeah, right. So um, almost every shopping center or any major place where you're going to enter, they have um, hand sanitizer. They have a security guard at the door to make sure you use it. They've since instituted temperature checks, as Amber mentioned. They weren't doing that when we first got here, but I think we got here Friday by Monday. They were doing that every time we've been out since then. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a good thing. Oh, and mask. You have to wear a mask if you're out and about. Uh, everybody has to. I've seen it on about 90% of the people. So, again, they only have a very low count. Only about 50, 55 people have tested here uh, for the virus. And of that 55, probably 40% or more are actually not Vietnamese. So, it's people just coming in from other areas that, have, that are bringing the virus in, which is why they shut down their borders. And, again, which is why we don't have an issue. And, again, was one of the reasons why we came to Vietnam, because they were very, very proactive and uh, keeping this tight and contained. So, like I said, we came in on the 13th. There were about 30 people on the flight, yeah, if even that. Um, we processed the customs pretty easily. Uh, the longest time taken was actually verifying the medical information that we gave them. Uh, you could do it online or via paper. And you actually basically five questions. Have you been in these countries? Have you had a temperature? Uh, have you had a cough? Blah, blah, blah. So you answer yes or no to those. They verified it. They verified your passport stamps to make sure that you haven't been to those countries that they asked you about. And then we went through. Uh, we got our visa on arrival. Well, you pay the second part of the visa. That took about five minutes. And that's because there was no one in there. Right. <laughs> it was a handful um, of people. Last time I came to Vietnam, it took about two hours. So that's a huge difference right there. Um, and ever since then, we've been here. We got here on Friday. Um, it's been a little bit wet and gloomy today. The sun is out and we are in because we have self-quarantine just to make sure that we're okay. Um, so we're staying in our community, which is Echo Park. Uh, we're not going to hit the city too much anymore for the next three or four days just to uh, just to make sure things get good to go. Uh, we did a lot of grocery shopping in anticipation. I'm cooking now, making some red beans. 
And uh, you ain't got no cornbread. No cornbread. I can't find no cornmeal, man. I ain't got no cornmeal, people. So um, that's it. That's that's our life so far in Hanoi. And I'm not calling out any um, the names of any airlines, but these airlines is out here trying to get get you. So before you get on the flight, make sure you know what is covered by your like with your luggage, what is covered and what is not. Because they could charge you very easily when you get to the counter. That's all I'm saying. For every little thing you got. So if you're, yeah, just be aware. Because they're looking at, because there are so few travelers, um, they're looking at everyone very closely and looking at everything you have and enforcing all of their policies. So mm. just be aware. Yeah, AirAsia. <laughs> so we flew on AirAsia quite a bit. We actually like them, which is one of the reasons why we flew them. But... Um, we were over on our luggage. We've probably been over every trip that we've found them. And we've had no issues. But this trip, we had huge issues. Mm-hmm. Um, we had to get rid of quite a bit of things at the airport just to bring our luggage down. <clears throat> so, yeah. They're not playing. Um, they don't have any. They don't have the revenue. So, they're going to make it up in the overage fees. Yep. Business, I guess. I guess they're still flying. And I thank them for that, I guess. But that's about it. Mm-hmm. Um, that's it. I think we're in Hanoi. We're going to see as much of Hanoi as we can when they open up everything again. All the temples are closed. Um, the uh, How long, babe? Yeah, that's what we're trying to get to. But they're supposed to be open um, April. So, yeah. And we're going to be here through April 10th as of right now, unless something happens. We're going to go through Vietnam for the next three months or so. So, follow us. We are Wondering Soup. I am Kat. And I'm Amber. Peace and love.